Hi! In this episode I'm going to walk through a few options for the analog sticks on the controller that I built for my quadriplegic nephew. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with analog sticks, analog sticks on a PS4 controller or an Xbox controller would be the thumbsticks. So what's the difference between a regular joystick and an analog joystick? What makes the analog joystick so special? An arcade joystick is typically just on or off. So if you press forward or if you press up, that's, that's on. And if you let go of the joystick, it comes back and that's off. There is no in-between. So on a PS4 controller or pretty much any controller since Nintendo, that's, that works like the D-pad. So if you press the button up on the D-pad, that's either on or off. There is no in-between. The analog sticks, on the other hand, have a full range of motion, and you know this when you're playing games, because if you press all the way forward on one of the thumbsticks, whatever game you're playing, let's say that moves your character forward, he's going to be sprinting or running when you press it forward. But you also know that if you press it just a little bit forward, he's going to walk. He's not going to move really fast. And you've got the full range, every direction, that you can fully control. That's, that's where the analog capability really comes in, and I'm going to explain how that works, and I'm going to show you two different designs that I have here in front of me. When I first decided to tackle this project, I knew that I was going to have to find some kind of analog solution for the controller. So I, I looked through the internet trying to find something I thought it would be easy to do, and it turns out that it's not nearly as easy as I thought it was going to be. There are several analog joysticks out there, but they get pretty pricey. One of the cheaper ones is like $250, and there's no way I'm going to spend $250 on an analog joystick. So I found some cheaper options, and I have those in front of me. I'll start with this guy. So this is what is inside of a PS4 controller, and probably also what is inside an Xbox controller. It's a very small analog joystick, but it works the same as as these other ones that I have down here with the, with the exception of this one. And I'll explain that in a minute. But this is what I'm looking to replace in my controller. Now these are these are designed to solder onto circuit boards. So it's not a good direct replacement. I mean, it's not something that I could really drop down and, and use it directly. Then the next guy, which is similar to that, is, is this right here. So this is a similar design as the actual analog joystick that I just showed you, except it's already pre-soldered to a circuit board that you could mount. And then, of course, these come with thumbsticks, just like would come with a PS4 analog stick that slides over the top, and then you can put your thumb on it and move it around. That's uh, another really cheap option. These were like, I don't know, a dollar a piece. I think you can get them like 10 for $10 or something like that. And these are similar. I think these are 2 or $3 a piece. Uh, the next one that I will show you are these two joysticks here. And when I ordered them, I had high hopes for these joysticks. Now, I do like these joysticks. They were only like $15 to $20, so, I mean, they're reasonable. But they're much smaller than I expected. When I saw them online, you know, they were about this this size. And then when I got them, they were, they were much smaller. Still nice joysticks. They're identical design. I mean, I think they're designed and made by the same company because everything is identical between them, except the handle on the top. So this is a plain Jane joystick. You just move it up and down, left and right, all around, and it, it works that way. This guy has a handle on it with a button on the top, 
and also you can twist the handle back and forth which gives you another analog function. That's why there's wires coming out of this one. These wires are to wire up the twist feature and the button on the top. Now the way these work and it's the same way that the original PS4 joystick works is every one of these has a potentiometer on two sides. That potentiometer, the reason there's two of them is because there's one for the y-axis which is forward and backwards and there's one for the x-axis which is left and right. And then of course whenever you push the diagonal direction it's moving both potentiometers at the same time. And a potentiometer, all that's doing is changing voltage. So whatever you're installing this in, it's going to have a reference voltage. That's how the PlayStation controller and the Xbox controller works. It sends a reference voltage into the potentiometer. And that potentiometer, when you move it, it changes the voltage and that changed voltage goes back to the circuit board of the controller and that's it, it knows the difference in voltage from the reference to what you changed it to and that's how it knows where the position of that joystick is so just for example if the reference voltage were 2 if I move if the joystick is at center then that's going to be half of 2 which is 1 if I press the joystick to the full extreme then that's going to be 2. If I move it backwards, it's going to be 0. And then, of course, there's an infinite range of voltages between 0 and 2 whenever I move the joystick. And it does that for each axis. So that's, that's how it works. It's actually very simple and cheap to do it that way. This is a joystick that would be found in something like an RC controller or a drone controller. And this is either a replacement joystick for an existing controller or it is just a joystick made for a DIY controller that you'd make yourself. I'm not really sure, but either way, this was a, a similar option. So again, it has potentiometers that are different. Every one of these has a different potentiometer style on it, but they all work the same way. All those do is change the voltages as you rotate them. The last controller, or the, I'm sorry, the last joystick that I'm going to show you is this guy right here. This is the, it's called the Ultra Stick 360 joystick, and you can purchase it from a company called Altamark. And as far as I know, this is the only arcade style analog joystick that I could find out there. And this is the one that I'm going to focus on in my build. And the reason I'm going to focus on this one is because I want the arcade style attachment. And it's, it's bigger. So, so I'm building this controller for my quadriplegic nephew who doesn't really have a lot of use of his fingers. He can move his hands around like this, but his, his fist is pretty much in a ball all the time. So I wanted something big enough that he could really push on and around and it's not going to hurt it any. So that's why I went with this solution. Now this joystick doesn't have any potentiometers on it. It's a completely different design that uses a Hall Effect sensor. And a Hall Effect sensor senses uh, magnetic fields. So on the end of this joystick there is a magnet. That's what that disc is on the very bottom. It's a magnet and as you move it it changes the magnetic field around that Hall Effect sensor. And then somehow the circuitry inside of here uh, detects that change in magnetic field and that's how it figures out the position of the joystick shaft. Now I've made another video going into full detail on how this works and how these potentiometer joysticks work that you can watch at your leisure. Uh, but I wanted to point out that this joystick is more of a digital joystick than a true analog joystick. Uh, and what I mean by that is there is software in this thing 
and you can plug it into a computer and you can reprogram it to do all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, you can remap the way the joystick works so you can do it. You can make it just do forward and backwards. You can make it do only left and right. You can make it do only diagonals. You can change it however you want, which is really cool. However, none of that matters for what we're using it for. We're only using it for the analog, the raw analog output. The reason I mention that is because we're using this joystick in a way that it was not designed to be used. And because we're doing that, we have to modify it a little bit in order to get it to work with raw analog with the Brook Wireless Fight Board that we're using to connect to a, a PlayStation. Now I'm working on my own joystick design that will be arcade form factor that uses the potentiometer style joystick design, but I'm a long way from getting that to work. So for now I'm going to focus on this joystick here and we're going to move forward with that. Now the reason I'm showing you the different options that I've looked at and not just focusing on one joystick that I'm planning to use is I may be missing something. Just because you know I, I'm focusing on one joystick doesn't mean that there's not applications out there where these other joysticks can be used. In fact, I've already got some ideas where I may use some of these other joysticks. I just want to get it out there and let you guys see what some of the options are so that you, maybe you can give me some new ideas of what we could use these for. I don't want to miss anything. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so I can't think of everything. And I know there's a lot of smart people out there that can help me come up with new ideas. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Catch my other videos where I show how to install all this stuff. And this guy, as I mentioned, it's a little bit more work to get it to work with our Brook board, but I go into good detail on how that works, why we have to modify it, and I do a lot of testing to verify that my fix does work, and it does. If you learned something or you're interested in watching more videos like this, Please like and subscribe, it would really help me out a lot, and I hope to see you next time.